Welcome to Synth Fundamentals. Today we're going to be talking about oscillators. Oscillators make sound. If you watched the last episode, you'll remember our dual framework of objectives and methods. If not, I'll link that in the description. Oscillators are generators, as in they create a signal. And that signal has a frequency, an amplitude, and a timbre. The frequency is controlled by the keyboard, and the amplitude is modified before we ever hear it. So what we're mostly concerned with is a timbre, because the oscillator creates our initial timbre. Subtractive synthesis is kind of like sculpture. You start with a block of material and you chip away at it. To do that, you need to have enough material. If you're trying to make a 2x2x2 two by two by two sculpture, a block that's 1x1x1 one by one by one is not going to cut it. Oscillators output waveforms, and each waveform has a different set of harmonics. As sound designers, our raw material are these harmonics. The simplest waveform is a sine wave. This has only the first harmonic, or fundamental. This means that a sine wave at frequency x will only contain frequency x. A sawtooth wave has odd and even harmonics. A sawtooth at frequency x also contains 2x, 3x, 4x, and so on. A square wave has a similar distribution to a sawtooth, but with only odd harmonics. A triangle wave also has only odd harmonics, but in a different distribution that's more weighted towards the fundamental. This gives triangle waves a darker sound. Some of you may be wondering why we don't always use sawtooth waves, seeing as they have the most material. To answer that, let's go back to the sculpting analogy. If you're trying to make a sculpture that's 2x2x2, two by two by two, and you start with a 10 by 10 by 10 block, you're creating a lot of extra work for yourself. And the same applies here. There's only so much modification you can do, so you want to start with the wave that most closely resembles your finished product. Here's a good way to remember the quality of each wave. A sawtooth is brassy. A square wave is hollow. A triangle wave is wooden. A sine wave sounds sort of unnatural, kind of like a ringing in your ear. There are other waveforms, but they require a little extra explanation. A square wave is part of a family of waves, called a pulse wave. Instead of moving gradually from the bottom of the wave to the top, like a sine or triangle, pulse waves are either on or off. To create other pulse waves, we adjust the proportion of on to off. This is called the pulse width. As a pulse width becomes narrower, we get a reedier or more nasally sound. There's also noise. Noise is different from other waveforms in that it's not a predictable repeating shape. Noise is random and contains all frequencies in different distributions, not just integer multiples. Most synths have white or pink noise. Now that we have our waves, we can start combining them. So, for example, combining a square and saw would have all integer harmonics but would have a greater emphasis on odd harmonics. Combining oscillators that are tuned to different notes gives us even more possibilities. So if I take two sawtooths, a fifth apart, I get access to harmonics that I wouldn't otherwise have. Combining two oscillators that are tuned to the same note but slightly detuned creates phase cancellation as the two waves reinforce and cancel one another. It's a great way to add movement and avoid dry static sounds. When we start discussing controllers, we'll dig more into pitch and pulse width modulation, which have some pretty amazing possibilities. We'll also talk about a special type of oscillator, an LFO, or low frequency oscillator. Until then, if you like the video, support me on Patreon for behind the scenes footage and bonus tutorials. As always, I've been That Beat, and this has been Synth Fundamentals. Thanks for watching.